Hi, and uh, welcome to So Fabulous. Uh, my name is Jennifer Taylor, and today I'm going to show you how to upcycle some old garments and leftover fabric into a man's wallet. So as you can see here, here's some examples where I've taken the jacket and kept some of the detail on with the button to make this very simple cash and card wallet. So what you're going to need uh, is obviously your scraps. So you can see I've already cut into this quite a bit already, but there's plenty of fabric still left in this to be used for other projects. I'm gonna go with this lovely green jelly bean fabric, and obviously you're gonna need some equipment. So we're gonna need tape measure, something to mark with, so Taylor's chalk or an erasable pen will be fine. Fabric scissors, you're also gonna need paper scissors, obviously some thread, pins, and a ruler would be very helpful. What you're also gonna do is just take some newspaper. There's no need to go and get your standard um, dressmaker's paper. You get this free in the door, don't need to spend a penny. So this is just what we use to make our pattern with. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the, uh, the local newspaper and um, I'm gonna be measuring up my wallet size. So I won't need all of this, so let's just break it down for size. Okay, so what's great about using the newspaper is that it's already got a right angle part here and your wallet size will need to be nine inches by five and a half. I'm just going to quickly take my ruler and again this is really great because it's got the angles on there just to make sure you're doing this straight. So just marking my points, making sure we're at 90 degree. Just quickly cut that out. There you go. We have our wallet pattern. Now what I want you to do before we move on any further is just to mark out um, the wallet's pockets so for the cards and for the paper money. I need you to measure four and a half inches up, which will be here and there. And then you need to do three and a half here and here. Okay, again, quickly use your ruler just to straighten those up. Okay, so what we effectively have here is one piece of paper. But you've actually got three templates here to, to cut your wallet pieces out of. You're going to need two at the full size. You're going to need one at the next size. And then you're going to need two of the smaller size. But because I want the outside of my wallet to be different from the inside, this is what I've done. So we've got one of the big piece and the corresponding lining exactly the same size. So there's my two pieces, one of the next size down. I've only got one of the smaller size and I'm just about to cut that out now. So if you want to follow that process with me. So I'm just taking my fabric. So what I would have done is just fold your pattern on the line, place it on your fabric. Now you can pin if you want. I'm just going to quickly mark it with my pen. So taking the fabric scissors, you're going to cut out the final piece. Obviously just get rid of the salvage there. Okay, so I'm going to go take it to the iron now. So what I'm going to be doing is, is creating a double hem on um, the flaps for the wallet. I've already done this on the two pieces, so I'm, I'm not touching my bigger pieces. They can be put to one side. Um, so as you can see, I've done a row of top stitching and it's been folded over twice. So I'll just walk you through that process now. Okay, so just make sure you're Fabric is nice and ironed, no creases. So I'm just folding it over once and ironing it. I'm not doing any particular measurement here. I generally go with sort of my thumb width because um, the, 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 they're staggered anyway, the pieces are staggered. So you don't need to be precise about this. So that's the first fold. And then if you just fold it over again, an iron. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing now is just running 
a line of top stitching to keep that in place. So um, I've just pressed my double hem in place. Again, I've not pinned this because if your iron's hot enough, you can see it's staying into, in place anyway. So I'm just gonna put it straight under the machine. Again, this is just a straight stitch and I'm gonna be using the edge of the foot again for the uh, line. So off we go. So this project's really good for a beginner, so you're getting used to obviously using your machine and doing straight lines. So there you go, there's my finished pocket, and I've got three of those. One, two, and three. Okay, so I've got my three pieces now. Um, what I want to do with the middle piece here is just to get a measurement of the card. So I'm just gonna take one of my cards here. If I just fold it over, and place the card so I know that I can get my fingers underneath it and then fold over. You might want to just finger press that or just quickly use the iron just to give you a crease mark but then you know that when you place it on your other fabric you know that you're not going to lose your card. I'm just going to quickly pin that in place. So I'll just take that away for a minute. So not moving the fabric just un Flap it, pin in place, and then again I'm just going to do a quick row of a straight stitch using the crease mark as my guide. So I don't um, keep having to fight with this leftover fabric, I'm just going to sew that down close to the edge. So there's our first card holder. So if I just demonstrate that for you now. There you go. And then what you do is take the final piece and place that on the bottom. So you might need to make some slight adjustments. As you can see, it's just a little bit longer than I need it to be. That's absolutely fine because I've allowed that in the measuring. So I'm happy with how that's positioned. And again, when you put the card in, you know that it's not going to go past it, so that's going to be a nice position, like so. When you're happy with that, again, just quickly pin in place. And what I want you to do is just do a quick base stitch all the way around just to keep that in place because we're going to be working with it quite a bit. So I'm actually going to fold this over. So I don't want to use a 1.5 seam allowance, we'll be using that later. So again, just use the edge of the foot as a guide just to keep your stitching straight. This is all going to be hidden in the final product anyway. Just going to put my needle down, do the spin of 90. Again, just put my needle down, spin it. So there you have it. And then when you've got your bigger piece, this might make a bit more sense. So when you open your wallet up, you'll have a section to put your notes in, and then you'll have your sections to put your cards. Now, obviously this is very big at the moment, we don't want that. So I'm gonna to need to find out where my center point is so we can have two sections for cards, so there'll be four in total. So just remove that bigger piece. So just literally fold it in half, and what I would do is just quickly nick that section there. So you can see where the centre is straight away. So with, again, without pinning, it's all in place because we've done this, the base stitch, so it helps keep everything in place. We're just going to put this under the machine and it's almost going to be like a U stitch. So what I'm doing, using this part of the foot, I'm going to line that up with my notch there. And what I'm actually going to be doing is sewing to this point on my fabric where the top stitching meets the first flap. So if I just do that first. And perfect. So the needle has literally gone through the top stitching that I've had. So we're going to do three st stitches. So take this slowly. One, two, three. And again, you're going to rotate and come back down. 
So now you can see that I've separated my pockets for my cards with a central seam. And because this is in a U shape and going in, it's going to be very tight and, and well held. So it'll take all the movement of the cards. So the next step is literally putting this onto the final piece of your lining. And again, feel free to just pop a few pins in to keep it in place. And just run some base stitching again around the same edges. And there you have your lining complete. Okay, so we're gonna put this to one side now and concentrate on the front of the wallet. So if you remember rightly, we had two pieces exactly the same, so as you can see they can fit. And this is actually from the arm of the jacket because I actually quite like this detail. Um, did something similar on this one where I've used the, the binding on the front of the jacket for a little bit of detail there. And I really like the button, but unfortunately there wasn't anything left. However, I did find one on the jacket. So I've just um, added some of the coloured material just to link it in, just to make it bigger so I can actually get it underneath the machine. So I've just quickly sewn on it and then folded the edges over. So it might be an idea actually just to fold this in half. Again, similar to what we did earlier. Just make a little slit so we know where the centre of it is. Similarly, do this with that. So I know that's where the centre is. Now, bearing in mind, we're going to have a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. So just come over a little bit further, making sure all my edges are tucked in. Just quickly pin that. Right. So I'm just going to, again, just do a quick top stitch, just securing my button in place. Should all be used to this 90 degree twisting of the fabric now. We've done it a few times. Okay, I'm just going to go back down the line again just to secure my threads. Oh. Because we've done that, I'm quite confident just to give that a snip. Because the back stitch would have locked it in place. So that will be the front of our wallet. But now I want to create the loop. So what I've done is just taken again the same material that I've used for the lining and just almost created like a, a bias binding, if you like. It's just to give me a loop for my button. I've just folded it over in half and then brought the edges to the center and ironed it and then folded it over again. So I'm just gonna run a quick line of top stitching just to secure that in place. Again, it's going to look great because it's tying in all the fabrics together. So to make your button loop, you just fold it in half so you know where the point is. And then you fold it over, fold it over again. And that should keep in place. I just need a rough gauge of how long I need my button loop to be. So I'm going to go with that. Just give it a little bit more than you actually need because bearing in mind you're going to be sewing in your seam allowance there. So just bring in this so you've got the right side above. You need to put your button loop this side of the fabric. If you do it this side, when you come to attach it, it's actually going to be inside your wallet and that's not going to be good to anybody. So keep it this side. Pin in place. Like so. And again, just quickly run a line of stitching. I'd go back and forth a few times over this because obviously there's going to be a lot of wear and tear. You don't want to end up losing your, your money. Okay, so that's the front part of my wallet done now. So all I'm going to be doing is attaching the lining part of my wallet to the front part. So again, it's the, the classic right sides together, making sure the button loop is inside the fabric. If we just again pin this together, Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is running a 1.5 seam allowance all the way around, leaving a small opening. This allows us to then pull the wallet the right way around. So let's just quickly do that. Okay, so I'm going to go from here. So just secure the start of the stitch with the back stitch. 
just so it doesn't come undone when you're pulling it back through. Just going all the way around. Catching all of the pieces together. Just be careful of your pins. Last stretch now. So again, I'm just going to do a back stitch just to secure that. So you can see here that this is the stitch that I've just done. And that was the base stitch. So you're not going to see that because that's all going to be tucked inside. So that's going to be nice and clean edge. So you just need to undo these pins. And what you're going to need to do now is just clip the edges. It's just to reduce bulk. So when you do turn it out, they're not thick. I'm going to do that on all four sides. The reason why I'm, I'm doing extra trimming on these three sides and not the top side is because you've got multiple layers of fabric here, whereas that you've only got one on this side. Okay, so you're ready to turn this inside out now. And there you have it. It's almost beginning to take shape. It's not quite there yet. So what I want to do now is just poke these corners out to give them a nice crisp edge chopstick. Every sewer needs one. So you're just going to pop it in and just gently tease the corners now. Now because you've clipped your corners, you've reduced the bulk in that area so it should be nice and crisp. So as you can see, just with that, the corners are a lot more neater now. So now I just need to press this in place ready for top stitching. Okay, so I've uh, just ironed my wallet just to give it a nice crisp edge. Just going to pop this under the sewing machine. I'm just going to do a nice top stitch. So obviously this depends on your personal preference, whether you want it to be wide or, or narrow. I'm going to go with a quite close fitting top stitch. And I've also gone with quite a bright uh, thread because I want to be able to see it. So it's adding detail to my wallet. Now, if you remember when we pulled the wallet through, we've got a gap. So the reason why we're doing the top stitch as well is to not only give detail to your wallet, but to actually close this gap as well. So again, just make sure your hem is, or seam, sorry, is tucked in. And then continue stitching. Nearly there. Bear in mind, this is this quite bulky because obviously I'm using denim and then you've got three, sorry, four layers of fabric. So you might need to give it a bit of a nudge. That's a couple of inches. Okay. I'm just going to go over the original sew line again and just do a back stitch just to tack it in place. Again, because I've done that, I'm quite confident just to give those a snip. If you wanted to, you could thread them back into the wallet if you wanted. But I'm happy not to do that. And there you have it, there's your finished wallet. So again, just to recap, you've got an area for your banknotes and you've got four pockets for your cards. And on this one, I've decided to put a button on it. And the great things about these, they're really quick to, to make, as you can see. They come in all different shapes and sizes. As you can see, I've made my one bigger and I've even inserted a zip so I can put change in there. So it really is a versatile product. So I hope you enjoy making your wallet. <laughs>